Hey everyone, today we're looking at the statement, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Now, as we go through this, I'll often use scripture that kind of sums up this verse somewhere. I may read it at the beginning, or I may read it partway through. But today our, our verse comes from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Beloved, we are now God's children. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When God is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Now, when you look at the Apostles' Creed, it kind of has this Trinitarian structure. It starts with God, then Christ, then the Holy Spirit. And, you know, there's a lot more spent on Christ. There's actually not a lot said about God the Father, but God is first, which is probably important. Today it's God as Father, tomorrow we'll see God as Creator. And, you know, thinking about this in the Trinitarian way reminds us this is all relational, right? God is the Father because Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the Son because God is the Father. Um, it's, it's more about the relationship between them than gender or anything like that. Uh, we're also born of God, so these metaphors are, are flexible. And, you know, it is centered in Christ because calling God Father was not really common before Jesus. And yet that's the most common way that he refers to a, to the Lord. And so Christian writers continue this idea to include us as God's children, as we heard in 1 John. And so really it's the idea that God is the source of, of everybody. Everyone, not just Christians, everyone is a child of God because nobody else created them. The question is, do others recognize it and then do they live like it? So God is the Father and it also says Father Almighty. Now that term Almighty, uh, it probably goes back to the Hebrew term El Shaddai, but we don't actually know what that term meant to the Hebrew people. Almighty is a translation of it, but it's not really necessarily what it means. It probably meant something like of the mountains. So you could see the idea of might coming through, and that became common in the time of the New Testament. But I, I think it raises this question of, should we think of might as God's primary attribute? Uh, do we emphasize God's might or God's love? Where is God's true power found? Well, what we see revealed in Jesus is that God's truest power is love. You know, it's, a, it's more of a primitive assumption that God is mighty and sovereign and powerful, but that's just kind of equating the God of the Bible with like Zeus or Odin from pagan religions. We believe that the God Jesus called Father is different. And that difference is seen in the idea that God is love, as First John also tells us. And so what John says here in this verse that we looked at is that when we see God revealed clearly, we'll be like God. When we mistakenly focus more on God's power, then we're going to pursue power. And history has shown the church has often done that. But when we call God an all-loving Father, then we're more likely to imitate God's love. So let's see God as God truly is, as a father who gives us birth and shows unconditional love to every single person that God has created.